I'm Jane. I'm Daisy. This is our first question for the evaluation as a director's commentary for in what way does media product does our media product use, develop or challenge the forms and conventions of real media texts? For our product we created a music video um, with the company with accompanying album artwork and a magazine advertisement. Nicholas's theory of a product being the same but different keeps the audience aware of what to expect but also gives them something different to prevent boredom, which is what we try to incorporate in our products. It's similar with G. Burton's theory, um, with the quote that repetition and recognition leads to expectation and anticipation, and that keeping the similar elements in the music video will excite the audience. In order to achieve our brief, we need to know the conventions of a typical music video. To do this, we analysed a couple of standard pop videos, um, like Taylor Swift's and the band Outcast. The main conventions that we see in these, and indeed in other music videos, are typical locations such as the studio and on location shots, and we often see the protagonist in the video is often the artist or the lead singer in the band. In videos you also sometimes have dancers or actors for other roles within the narrative, and the iconography um, of the artist in the videos is mainly determined by their own image. Um, there's a quote by Andrew Goodwin shows that the image of an artist can easily be continued throughout different medias and the quote is that artists may develop their own star iconography in and out of their videos which over time become a part of their star image. However, the conventions don't need to be followed completely and they're often broken in very successful music videos. Um, Peter Fraser clearly states in his quote a distinctive art form which can allow really interesting creative opportunities. If the music video is narrative based then usually romance is a major factor, however, narrative, however if narrative is shown it's usually interweaved with the performance shots. Some videos, though, are purely performance or purely narrative based. If the narrative is a prominent feature, it's based on Tod Todorov's theory of equilibrium, no, equilibrium, disruption, and re equilibrium. Media language is a key part of the music video. The most important features include editing with the pace um, of the music itself. Um, and the frequent use of close-ups in order to connect the audience with the artist. The song we used was Big Black Horse on the Cherry Tree by Katie Tunstall, which is an acoustic rock song. Therefore, we had to research the conventions of acoustic rock genre. Above us in the big screen will be the most important conventions of the acoustic rock subgenre. First we analysed Ed Sheeran's um, music video before we focused on our own. This helped us because the songs are of the same genre. The video is also completely narrative, which we looked at as an example of such. However, we chose to do a video which was only partly narrative, and again, the performance was interweaved with that. We used four main theories for our own video, Todorov, Levi Strauss, Props and Baths. There's clear equilibrium disruption and re-equilibrium in our video. Um, the equilibrium is shown here, with footage of Cathy wandering through the forest quite happily. The disruption is the disturbance in the woods and the presence of the unknown wolf. Um, which it should be showing here. And the re-equilibrium is at the end of the video where Kathy is dead. For Levi Strauss's theory, our main binary opposite of the idea of good versus evil, which is shown in the next clip, where the protagonist is beating the wolf around the head with a stick. There are also obvious enigmas within our video, which according to Bath's theory, drive the narrative. Examples of these are, where is she, is something following her, what's going to happen next, is she dead, and so on. Prop's theory of spheres in action is used in the, with the protagonist present as the hero and the wolf as the villain. These are the only two clear characters in our music video as they're the only um, clear and consistent character types. They're the only ones there. Yeah, and they're <laughs> the only ones there. In preparation for planning our own video, we watched a few acoustic rock music videos, including Please Don't Stop the Rain by James Morrison and This Is The Life by Amy MacDonald. Here's a clip of James Morrison. When analysing these videos, we noted a few important things such as these. When we looked at Amy McDonald's video, we noted similar conventions of the genre. Once we looked at the media language for both videos, we applied them to our storyboard for our own acoustic rock video. Moving on to our own video, which begins with the opening of a fairy tale like book. This introduction of the character links back to the happy equilibrium for the first minute or so of the video. As half the video is narrative based, we see the protagonist, Kathy, walking and running around the forest. Although the location is quite typical of an acoustic rock video, as seen in James Morrison's video, we find that we've broken the conventions by using long shots 
during these forest scenes and a few close and few close ups. Handheld tracking shots are also used frequently, which creates the realism for the viewers, making the making the same but different. The performance side of the video, which we shot in the studio, clearly shows the iconography of the artist through costume choice and props. The majority of the performance shots stick to conventions with plenty of close-ups and well-placed editing. However, we wanted to avoid using the male gaze, which is a theory by Laura Mulvey, in any section of the video, as voyeuristic cinematography is typical of the music video genre, but as other acoustic opera artists, such as Amy MacDonald, do not use it in theirs. The fact that the artist also plays the main protagonist in the narrative side of the video also fits into the conventions of a music video. We use a lot of intertextuality in the narrative of our video, which, according to Andrew Goodwin and Peter Fraser, is likely to appear in most of your music videos. This can be seen through iconography of the artist during these scenes, where she's wearing a red cape, linking back to Little Red Riding Hood. We use the theme of fairy tale throughout the narrative because we thought the title of the song links itself to more fantasy-based plot, and we thought it'd be very striking to watch. This involves Cinderella, um, where she loses a shoe, and Snow White at the very end of the video, where she bites into the apple. This iconography fits well with the quirky nature of the artist, which is what we wanted to keep in the video. <laughs> the lighting we used in the studio is, we think you'll agree, quite striking. The idea for this came from the music video, which you'll see on screen now, Ed Sheeran's song, You Need Me, I Don't Need You. As you can see, the lighting is similar to our own video, and we thought that the light fell on the artist in a very defining way, and looked good. We thought mainly of this lighting style when setting our own lighting up. The editing we did for our video suits the conventions of a typical music video, which has the pace to match the track. However, we kept in mind that we wanted to keep an even distribution as possible of the performance shots and the narrative-based shots, as well as the studio and location shots. We tried to make it as seamless as possible in our editing, and we obviously tried to make sure the lip-syncing was in time with the music. Um, which we think we've hopefully achieved. We also have used fast-paced editing, which is typical of a music video. Although there are no obvious dominant ideologies in our video, we have not used any alternative ones either, so the video can be very much considered as mainstream and fit into the acoustic rock conventions and the artist's image. I think that we have developed the feel of our video um, by the muted colour palette, the blue filter that's used on the location shots. It gives it a slight old film look and made the tone um, of the footage look a lot more sinister, making it stand out from the normal. We were aware that the lighting and some of the shaky camera movement of the, on the location footage could have been better, but, well, it was confirmed by the audience feedback, however, we did not have the equipment nor the time to go back and reshoot. Although a lot of our video followed typical conventions, such as the editing pace, frequent close-ups, and the protagonist being the artist, according to audience feedback, we brought conventions with the narrative and the fact that it was based on fairy tales. The fact that we also had the protagonist dying at the end of the video is unusual and not a happy ending. It also creates an enigma which is never answered, does she really die? And especially because the fairy tale book opening and closing at the beginning of end of the video is also quite unusual and unique. Moving on to our print products, we brought to life an album advertisement for a music magazine and an album cover, including the back and the booklet inside. The conventions of an album cover are usually prominently focused on the image of the artist's face, with the artist's logo, which is often their name but in a specific font or style. Um, the cover should also be representative of the artist's individual iconography. Uh, hopefully this should be an image of our album about us. For inspiration and research, we analysed Ingrid Michaelson's album, Be OK. We noticed conventions in the album cover, which is primarily the fact that the image of the artist is the focus and the logo is underneath her. Ingrid's album is also representative of the artist herself because of the natural image and lack of makeup and the simplistic colour scheme. The title of the album is written across the artist's face in black paint, which acted as inspiration for our logo of Kaffee Strecker being painted across the face in our own album cover. We also looked at a curious thing with the album by Amy MacDonald, which shows the same conventions and also had the logo as her name, which is in itself a convention of an album cover. However, some albums, particularly ones with a graphic design, do break these conventions. The inside panels of our album contained a montage and a thank you page. For our thank you page, we didn't look at, at a specific example, but we noticed throughout album booklets that did have thank you pages, they tended to have one photo with the text or overlapping it or often next to it. We also noticed that the signature or the name would be at the bottom of this long paragraph of thank yous. Um, this would be, of course, to connect with the audience. When we created our own panel, we used a striking on-location shot of our artist, which fits with the colour scheme of the album, red, black and white. We also used the same text as we used for the back and front covers of the album to stick with the same style um, of 
and we signed the artist's name using the font Chloe's handwriting from dafont.com. We found that the text itself usually contains thank yous to the artist's family, friends and the people who worked out with the album from the record company and so on, as well as the fans. We recreated this, as you can see above, by thanking the appropriate people. This makes the album seem more believable as a real product and connects to real people. Our second panel for the album was our montage page, which you can now see, which was inspired by the montage in the Florence and the Machine booklet for the album Lungs. We created this with a range of pictures taken both on location and in the studio. We used the programme InDesign in order to um, cut them out and layer them together. We also think that the montage fits with the quirk image of the artist and allows the consumer a closer look into the process of creating the album, as some of the shots are not seen anywhere else. All the clothes and on scene of the pictures again fit with the iconography of the artist. The back cover of the album sticks to the conventions of what you would expect of a back cover in the fact that it includes track titles, the name of the artist, and it also includes another image of the artist and all the small print that's usually associated with the back cover. Which makes it mean seem more authentic. Yes. The reason I'm saying that we used with a shot of the artist with the acoustic guitar reinforces the fact that she is an, this is a, an acoustic rock album. The border around the edge of the back cover connotes the fairy tale feel of the video and could also link to the woods that we see in the inside panels and on the video. Overall, the front and back covers together come across as quite simplistic, but they still manage to convey the artist well, which is common of the acoustic rock genre. The conventions of album adverts and magazines are an image of the artist, usually a medium or long shot. The artist's name and logo are the date of the upcoming album. The genre is quite easy to identify in the posters, such as this one, in which Katie Tunstall is holding a guitar linking to the acoustic rock genre. The clothing is black and simple and she's not wearing much makeup, which links to the artist's iconography and the fact that acoustic rock artists are much more about the music than the music itself rather than the look of the artist. The poster also has the artist's name and album title. We've noticed that studio shots also seem the most popular option for advertisements. This is where we got the idea to break the convention slightly and use an on-location shot for our own. We also looked at this poster which contains some of the same features but there's more information about the album itself. Our poster includes all the vital details, the artist's name and album name, the logo and the date of the album release. The colour coding for the text fits with the artist's image of course, and the fact that the poster links the video through costume and location makes it perhaps more recognisable to an audience who may have seen the video but do not know the artist. Although we broke conventions with the location, we did use a long shot of the artist to show her whole costume and gave her a guitar to link to the genre of the music. We also brightened the photo in using Photoshop to make the background slightly more darker and her stand out a lot more. Okay. The eye contact she has with the camera connects the artist to the audience, so hopefully they will buy the album. Which most people said on the questionnaires that they would. Which is great.